Have a seat on your porcelain throne. It's time to talk some shit on the Powell Movement. Welcome to the Powell Movement. I'm your host, Mike Powell, and this week I'm changing things up and taking a road trip down to Prineville, Oregon to see one of the most radical bike events on the planet. No, I'm not talking about Red Bull Rampage, I'm talking about Proving Grounds, which can be looked at as a mix of Big Mountain and Slope Style all mixed into one. Think huge jumps, insane drops, man-made sculpted features, and the best men and women riders in the world. While I might not be the biggest bike guy, I love bike events, as what these athletes are doing is mind-blowing, and the energy these events always deliver is second to none. For this event, I stayed with an old K2 co-worker, Dan Moore, who now works at Laird Superfoods. Dan was my wingman all weekend long, and while he didn't take all the photos that I wanted him to, he did spot Travis Rice in the crowd, which enabled me to get a few minutes with that dude. So at the end of the day, Dan did his job, although it would be awfully cool having a photo of me talking to Travis Rice or Brandon Seminuck. But whatever. Thanks for all the Laird Superfood stuff and picky bars. They kept me going at this event. Actually, what kept me going and kept me on fire was one of my sponsors who also sponsored this event. Ten Barrel was on site, and I had way too many Pilsners, which you will hear in my voice for sure. So thanks Mason, Dave, Bree, and all the Ten Barrel folks I met this weekend for keeping me hydrated. I also want to thank the rest of my amazing sponsors. They are Stanley, Alpine Vans, Dragon, Peter Glenn Ski and Sports, and Rollerblade. And now, it's time to talk about my road trip down to Prineville, Oregon for Proving Grounds. So I left Seattle around 10 a.m. and made the solo trip down to Dan's house in Redmond. It rained at the event site during my drive, so when I arrived at the event, the riders were sessioning the bottom third of the course as up top, what once was a venue that was as dusty as it possibly got turned to sticky mud and couldn't be ridden. This is Friday afternoon at 4, and the event is supposed to start Saturday morning, which means it's going to be limited practice for the athletes and no jump jam on day one, which was fine with me. My first mission of the day was to go find the 10 Barrel folks and have a Pilsner, because I really love their Pilsner. Then I went on the hunt for Katie Holden. Katie is known for putting together events like Red Bull Formation, and for me, and I'm sure most of the media and athletes at this event, Katie is the point of contact and in charge of bracelets, which grants us access to the course and everything else. A must-have for an event like this. So I got in a few words with Katie before heading up onto the course. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to get the word out to as many people as possible and just really let everyone know what Proving Grounds is about and why it's important and why our community needs it. What is it about? Has it changed? Because it seemed like the last time in 2019, it was like you get a bid into... uh rampage and there was not many women involved and now this time you don't get a bid into rampage but there's a whole women's event and since like covid happened it seems like women's events are exploding you're like a major part of that so i'm gonna ask you to speak to a lot of different things (laughs) no i mean in in terms of um having the women out here i'm just really really excited to have there's a field of six women out here and I feel like with each event, the women's field's getting deeper and deeper, and there's so much talent, and there's just a lot of enthusiasm and just stoked for women's free ride right now, and there's a lot of excitement from the athletes, but the industry is, like, really supporting the women, which has been incredible and a long time coming, and... It's happened in the whole world, not even the industry, huh? Yeah, the whole world, yeah, cross-section sports, really, and all the men and women are working together out there and figuring out the features, and I think that collaboration is really important to keep moving the sport forward is to have that collaboration and how are the features for the women out there i mean they're pretty big jumps are they able to get the speed they need to clear it and is that going to be an issue yeah well in all honesty it's been a bit tricky this year everyone walked the course yesterday and the wind picked up super quick yesterday so i would say they maybe got an hour max of practice yesterday before it was too windy to ride so, I mean, you're looking at little Brooke, she's 106 pounds, so you imagine the wind. And then today with the rain, I mean, we were on course hold for most of the day, and right now we're still just kind of waiting for it to dry, but it, it's really like Velcro out there. So right now it's hard to clear the jumps because the dirt's really slow. The next person I bump into is a dude I've interviewed before and a guy I always get sound bites from. He's a hometown favorite and one of the key players around the first rendition of Proving Grounds, Carson Storch. 
Are you involved with the event like you have been in years past? Nope, I am just an athlete this year, just riding in it, competing. Does that make things a lot easier for you where you don't have to worry about any of the bullshit that goes along with putting on something like this? For sure, yeah, it's just fun. I'm just here to ride and, uh, you know, still helping out where I can, the local knowledge, but, uh, yeah, less pressure and, yeah, less event coordinating, so it's fun. And everything's cleared out. It was really shitty yesterday, right? No, it was just dry and a little smoky, so now it just kind of went to the opposite extreme of greasy, but it's going to set in and dry out and be really good. So Carson is confident that like the 2019 event, the weather will cooperate and it will be a rad event. And at this point, I went up to watch practice and drink some beers. When all was said and done for day one, I realized that I might not even get a podcast done as I've only had two clips in the can, and I'm okay with that. I've already got an interview ready to go for Monday, but the goal is really to put something out two days after this event. That was my plan. So I needed to let Dan know that although we didn't get much done on day one, we were definitely going to crush it on day two, and we were going to need to be at the event at 7 a.m. to maximize my time and his time there and get some shit done to make a fun podcast. So we got in the car around 6 a.m., and as we're driving, I'm reading Katie Holden's email saying that the schedule for the day is going to be pushed back a few hours to give the course time to dry. Since we are already on the way, I suggest to Dan that we drive by Greg Stump's house in Prineville, Oregon. And if you haven't listened to my podcast from the first Proving Grounds two years ago, you are missing out on my wild experience in 2019 at Greg's house. Greg is an eclectic, legendary filmmaker who pretty much changed the game of skiing in the 80s. And let's just say that at his house in 2019, I was scared for my safety. So we drive by Greg's house, we put a sticker on his mailbox, and we head to the venue, which is close to Greg's. It's early and I'm super tired, but I'm also really motivated to get things done. And the first person I run into is Hannah Bergman. She's a badass Red Bull athlete who just hosted the Women's Jump Jam up in Bellingham. And she's psyched about the opportunities that women are having these days in the sport. So you had a big event last week, wasn't uh-huh. it? And it went yeah. off, right? Yep. Yeah. And we've seen so many opportunities since the pandemic started for women that have mm-hmm. come up. How exciting is that for you and uh, your whole crew? Yeah, it's super exciting. Like, I'm super stoked that more companies, brands, media are keen to support women's free ride. And it seems like you're just gaining some momentum. And the course here today, I mean, it's early in the morning. No one's had a chance to practice today. Yeah. But it seems like training has been cut short a bunch going into an event like that what goes through your head yeah it's tricky like weather is something you can't control so you just try and work with what you can and it definitely makes it tough to think about doing a competition not having enough practice but we'll probably just feel it out and adjust as we need to and based on your event and the people that you've been seeing riding today and just the course over the past few days who's riding really well right now for the women's field i think everyone's riding super well honestly they're all looking really good i think Brooke Anderson, someone you should keep an eye out for. She's the youngest competitor. And okay. She's definitely got a lot of style and like looks just super comfy on her bike. For the guys, I think Jackson Riddle for sure. He's definitely yeah. got the deepest trick bag and the most like amplitude on every jump. And then this event used to be like a rampage qualifier. Yeah. And it's not a rampage qualifier anymore, I don't think, and that doesn't really matter at all. But with those type of events, do you want to see women start getting into those events as well? Is that like the end goal? I think so, yeah. I don't know that we're quite ready yet, but I think like getting more opportunities to do things like Proving Grounds is a great first step to heading in that direction, like doing more free ride events. Is it weird that you have to prove that you belong to be able to go to the next step? Where it's like, you should be able to be in these events. It is, but that's also the nature of the sport. Like it's it's a sport that you have to prove yourself to progress in. So yeah, it doesn't seem surprising. Awesome. Yeah. And how was your camp last night? You were here. Was it cold? Did you get a good sleep? Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to have things more dialed, but I'm pretty good at dirtbagging and just sleeping in the tent. So yeah, it's good. So that was Hannah at 7 a.m. And I didn't expect to see any athletes that early. I was hoping to find the event organizer who I knew would be up and at him early. Another dude I've done a podcast with, Todd Barber. And at about 7.15 a.m., in walks Todd Barber to the event corral where I can talk to him. We had some weather move in, some different changes, and you've had to make a bunch of adjustments. How stressful is that for you? I mean, it is stressful, but I've been doing this so long that it's just really, I've let go of weather. You just got to take it as it comes, make the decision as it comes in. So I'm not terribly stressed. The weather's supposed to be good today. So let's just hope the sun pops out and dirt dries and everybody gets on their bikes and sends it. 
Yeah, everybody's going to send it for sure. It yeah. seems like it's one of those events where it's not as serious as a rampage, where there's more of a, a fun kind of cool vibe and the riders have some stay on the features a little bit here and there. And is that how you created it now, where it's just like a more fun end of season type deal? For sure. I mean, that's what free riding is and that's what the athletes want. They want it relaxed, you know. Rampage is definitely the pinnacle. It's kind of the showcase place for people to compete and that's Rampage. I really wanted this to be kind of its little brother and it's just here to have fun. I mean, it's definitely a competition. It's definitely a place to prove yourself. We've got some, you know, up and coming athletes and we've got established athletes, but we want this place to be kind of a gathering, especially after a year and a half of no competitions, you know, we're just all psyched to be together and the stoke was high yesterday during practice. And that's really what this is all about. Just getting everybody together, riding bikes, having a good time. And what's the vision for this? Because, you know, before it was like you get an entry into Rampage. I think that's off the table now. And this is going to be its own series because this is totally different than Rampage. It's more of like big mountain slope style where Rampage is just big mountain gnarly. And so what's your vision of what these are going to be? Yeah, Proving Grounds, the vision's always been to fill the void between the slope style, FMB World Tour and Rampage. There's just been this huge gap in the sport where... Either you're a full-on slopestyle rider or you're getting into big mountain rampage. And um, this is really about all the athletes want to compete, you know. And there's, you know, probably 40-some-odd guys and 20-some-odd girls that are at the top of the game. And they've got nowhere to show um, their skill. So this is what Proving the Gowns is about. It's a place to come and ride and prove yourself. In the future, will it be more than a one-stop series? Will it be a few different Proving Grounds? That's the plan. Yeah, we're hopeful to do a tour next year. You know, we'll see if we can get some support from industry, non-industry, and um, raise the money to do it. But we've got some people gathering and talking about it, so that's the goal is to make this into a two- or three-stop tour next year. Athletes want it. There's some key partners that are excited about it, so, um, you know, probably post-Rampage we'll start pulling it together see what we can do. It's pretty cool that Todd has a big vision for this event, and for me, it's time to head over to the athlete tent. And since I don't know that many people in the bike world, I'm kind of one of those lurker dudes, and it's pretty strange, but it's part of my job. But then, at around 9 a.m., a familiar face appears. It's Sage Catabriga Alosa. Last time you were at Proving Grounds, it wasn't so awesome for you. <laughs> yeah, I kind of have some demons from yeah. uh, two years ago being here. Do they let you ride the course this year? They're like, no, we're not letting that ski guy on there anymore. No, they totally invited me back. I brought my bike too, but I'm just chilling. What have you seen that kind of has blown your mind? Yeah, the course is definitely like kind of upgrade from last time. Okay. And so it's pretty cool to see some of the like familiar features and to be able to like walk out and check them out up close. Since last year, I kind of didn't get a chance to do that or last time. Yeah, so I guess like anything, you see this stuff in person. And the size and the just the scope of things really pops out at you. Yeah. You know? Just being like, wow. That's like going to Rampage, too. It's like you see it on TV, and then you go and you see what they did. It's like jumping off buildings, and that's what it's like here. Yeah, yeah. There's some incredibly large features here, and we're looking for it all to burn off. And everything actually worked out with the rain. It's going to be a good day today. Yeah, I think as soon as this fog burns off, it's going to be really good. And there's some, like, I mean, there, yeah, the list of riders and the riding that's already gone down is pretty amazing. So I'm really fired up to see what's happening. And I'm a judge. Oh, you're a judge? Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. So where do you sit as a judge? At the top of that big drop, there's, like, a little extra lily pad built into it. And that's where we judge from. It's, like, the highest place on the course. And so you can see everything. So that puts a lot of pressure on your shoulders because, like... <laughs> You're like a ski superstar and people look up to you, but you look up to other people. There are probably a lot of people that ride bikes here that you watch them and you're like, you see Brandon Semenuk, you're like, that guy's fucking badass. Oh. And now you have to judge Brandon Semenuk. That's yeah. crazy. Well, luckily he's not in it. He's, he's just right? here to ride. Okay. Uh, he has a rally car race. And so he, I don't think he can stick around. He has to leave at like noon or something. Oh, no way. <laughs> so he's not in it. He's just here to ride. But no, but to the point is yeah i'm like you know a huge fan of all these guys i've been like into biking for as long as i've been into skiing but just more as like you know i'm like a f super fan and you know i'm also kind of in the bike scene a little bit as well just because of like biking being a seasonal sport and it speaks to so many skiers and snowboarders it's like that kind of crossover you know kind of ambassador is sort of who i represent pretty easily so for me i've been going and seeing 
down in Virgin, like I've been down there since the early 2000s. I've started riding there and watched Rampage early, you know, 2000. So I kind of have a long history of like watching and knowing what like the big bike scene is like and watch every slope style and downhill. So I'm like super into all the bike events. So I feel like I can do a great job because I'm passionate about it. Yeah. You know? And the job is insanely difficult. You know, watching yesterday go down and like, okay, these guys are like sessioning this over here and they're doing tricks. These guys are hitting this big thing. It's left, you know, you're just like, how can I even compare these? And, ju- you know, it's definitely like, especially with this course, a lot of variation leads to a lot of creativity, which I really look for. You know, my own skiing and yeah. when I did contests, I was always trying to stand out and do a line no one else was doing. Well, people can do that here, but it's really hard to compare that. If everyone's doing something kind of different. You know, it's not just like the same kind of slope style track. So definitely a big job, but uh, I'm psyched. Sage and I talked a little bit longer and he mentioned that he's known Josh Bender for a long time. And I think Sage just bringing up Josh Bender's name made Bender appear out of nowhere. It was like he teleported in and Josh Bender is an absolute legend and badass. And holy shit, he remembered me. How are you, Mr. Pal? Good, yourself? I'm doing all right, dude. Can I ask you a couple questions? What do you want to ask? I don't even know, man. I've just figured I saw Bender. I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, So you're judging this thing, right? Yeah. And you've got an esteemed panel of judges. I saw Sage Catabriga Alosa is the judge. Totally. And he told me that he's known you since like the 2000s. I mean, it's like such a small world that you guys have been friends for 20 years and 20 plus years, dude. I've known Sage. Sage and I have gone way back, dude. It's like we were both kids at one time, dude. And I met Sage when he was, Christ, dude, probably like 19. It's a Living small in Alta. Yeah. Oh, were you out in Alta too? I was just out there skiing. Okay. And so the event here, it's kind of like big mountain slope style, I'd say. It's not full on rampage, but it's not full on crank works. What do you think of the course and what do you think of uh, what you've seen so far? I definitely like the course. It's going to be interesting to see how the riders use it. And the new additions to the previous proving grounds are definitely cherries on top. Okay. The rider list that you have is crazy shit. Yeah, the riders list is definitely a hard hitting field. It's going to be really exciting. The progression of the riders this year. Last proving grounds, the first one where the judges sit, you weren't seeing people sessioning that drop and doing tricks. Yesterday in practice, session that thing. That thing got hit more times yesterday than it did in the previous event with way more tricks going on. And you put that into the progression of things and that's 25 foot vertical, 25 foot out. And they're just looking at it going, okay, one rolling, now I'm gonna trick it. So the progression scale has definitely gone up. Next up for me was walking the course. I feel like at all these events, you really need to go up to the top and see all the features. And on my way up there, I saw Kyle Jamison, the point man and creative force behind the build of a lot of these features. So yeah, yeah, yeah. how many of you guys built this thing? <laughs> so it was six of us and kind of a skeleton crew, but, you know, it's kind of what you want sometimes. Like you get too many cooks in the kitchen and, you know, things get away from you. So it was 14 days, two weeks solid. And what was the most challenging feature here to build? I think that the Megalodon, like that big wooden shark fin, was one of the toughest things to build. I built the dirt pad and all the dirt stuff before the wood crew came here. So there was two professional wood builders that showed up to erect my visions out of wood because I'm not a wood guy. And that feature alone took me probably four attempts just to get the dirt right. And then it took about with the whole, everybody on deck and the biggest machine we had to get those logs to stand up. Oh, man. Because everything is built by, with trees, it looks like, other yeah. than, you know, like the, the two by fours that were used to build some of the features. But all the supporting beams are all trees just locally sourced right here. Just yeah. build it up. I just pushed them over with the big excavator, go through the forest and find good ones that look long and tall and sturdy. And this juniper is an invasive species out here. So, I mean, you're doing them a favor. Exactly. We're helping out the pine trees by taking these trees out. <laughs> and if you think about costs, I like putting a number on things. What do you think it costs to build a course like this from start to finish? 
That's a tough one. I mean, probably a hundred grand. It could be over a hundred grand pretty easily. Now you get these features built. Are you guinea pigging these things to make sure that they're good for the riders? Because there are some serious features where you're putting your life on the line in a lot of cases. Totally. You're the one building them. They have to hit them. Who hits them first? Man, I sit in the machine for hours and I get out. My legs are jello. My brain's mush. I can barely ride. Okay. <laughs> it sucks to say, but I haven't hit more than half of this stuff. But luckily, I know the athletes. I know all of them are my good friends and I know they're crazy enough to hit this stuff. So I just kind of wait for them and kind of like trust my intuition and, you know, I have a gut feeling about speed and trajectory and gravity. So I trust that heavily. Do you use any math or who needs math? I'm not good at math. Okay. I got a, I got a calculator, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's a lot of, it's a lot of experience and a lot of years underneath my belt building this stuff. It's time for my first sponsor break and I'm going to start things off with the 10 barrel brewery out of Bend, Oregon. 10 Barrel does so much for action sports. It's crazy. They sponsor a team of skiers, skaters, and bikers. They sponsor the most important podcasts in the genre. They have their own events. They put out movies. They do everything. But the most important and the greatest thing that they do is their beer because they have incredible beer. And the newest flavor is by far my favorite. It's a German-inspired Pilsner that is perfect for just about anything. It's light, it's crisp, and I love it so much. So next time you're at the store, please pick up a six-pack of 10 Barrel and taste the difference. They also have pubs in Denver, San Diego, Idaho, Portland, and their hometown of Bend. To find out more about 10 Barrel and the pubs, head on over to 10barrel.com. My next sponsor is Dragon. And not only does the brand have a stacked team with athletes like Chris Ben Chetler, Danny Davis, and Brian Aguchi, but they make sunglasses that float. When I was in Rehoboth Beach, two of my family members lost sunglasses in the water. Not me, because the space-age technology of my sunglasses allowed them to float to the top when they fell off. This is a game-changer, and that, combined with Dragon's LumaLens optimized lens technology, creates superior color vividness, improves depth perception, and reduces eye fatigue for better performance. It's something that you'll feel when you wear these sunglasses. And Dragon is making it easy for you to own a pair. All you need to do is head on over to dragonalliance.com, go shopping, and when you check out, Enter the code POWELL15. It's all one word and the number 15 with no spaces and you will save 15% on your order and you will look a hell of a lot better than you did in your old sunglasses. My final sponsor this break is Peter Glenn Ski and Sports. And while everyone can go check out all the deals over at peterglenn.com, Peter Glenn is so much more than just a website. For over 60 years, Peter Glenn has been getting people out there. Whether you're at one of their East Coast stores or online, You aren't just another transaction to Peter Glenn. You're part of the family. I've worked with a lot of retailers over the years, and that's what separates Peter Glenn from the rest. They care about earning your business. They have a true no-hassle return policy, and they have all the products, all the brands, and the best deals. So please check out Peter Glenn when you're buying all of your outdoor gear. That's round one of sponsors for me. Now let's jump back into the podcast. It's comforting to know that no math is used at all in the building of these features, What's also comforting is being at an event and knowing that Brad Holmes is there and he's still doing cool shit his own way. We're here at a bike event, but who cares about biking when Brad Holmes is here? How's it going, man? Good. How you doing? I'm good good. to see you up here. You too, man. So you've been here a few days? I've been here two days. Yeah, we've had uh, all kinds of conditions and the weather looks good today. Hopefully it all comes together. So it seems like in the past few weeks, you've been with uh, Tyler McCall, right? Yeah, I was down in uh, southern Utah with Tyler McCall. We're working on a project called Badlands, and uh, we've done one episode. Go check it out on Brad Holmes Cinema on YouTube. And uh, we're getting ready to do one, but that's after Rampage. Okay. And so for you, you've spent a ton of time in front of the lens of your life, and you've spent a ton of time behind the lens now. Is it weird behind the lens when you come to an event, you feel the energy, and you're filming the people? Uh, no, I, th- I, I find it challenging. Filming is, you know, you're learning stuff every day and I don't know. It's a lot of fun watching these guys go off. I'm definitely too old to do any of this shit. So I love it out here. It's, it's a lot different than, than filming snow sports, which is cool. You get to fucking walk up, walk around and not sink up to your chest, you know? <laughs> so I love shooting mountain biking. It's really cool. Cool, man. Well, we'll have to get a beer later on this afternoon if you're still drinking beer. Uh, yeah, I drink beer. I like tequila, but, you know, 
Yeah, I don't have a tequila tent here, but I got a sponsor that has <laughs> beer. Right. And we I'm better here. get you some food, man. You're starting to look too skinny. Man, well, Jeez. That's, thanks, man. Well, I, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm fat. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, Brad. Talk to you in a bit. All right. Unfortunately, I didn't run into Holmes again, but by this time it was 11 a.m. and I don't know how, but somehow, sometime, someone put a beer in my hand. And I don't know what is wrong with me, but for some reason, it made perfect sense for me to go interview the youngest kid at the event, beer in hand. You're coming off an amazing week, I hear, from uh, an event up in Bellingham. Yeah. How'd that go? Oh, it was amazing. Hannah did so well with her event. I love it. It was so sweet. Do you get starstruck at all? I mean, like, you're so yeah. young. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, crazy. Like, most of these people I've, like, watched forever. And now I'm, like, at an event with them. It's crazy. And, yeah, you're dropping in just like anybody else here. I know, yeah. And you're, you're the youngest, probably one of the smallest people here. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be an <laughs> yeah, issue It's for definitely you. hard. Definitely not the same as them because they're, like, full-grown men. And then I'm, like, 107 pounds. It's just not the same at all. It's difficult. What features scare you up there, if any? Um, I feel like I could hit most of them. Just speed is the issue. Like, yep. being physically capable of getting the speed for it is, like, my problem right now. But I would say, like, the giant drop at the end, like, the massive one, that one is terrifying. I don't even want to walk on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the on-off is pretty scary. I don't know about that one. But most of the stuff looks pretty fun. And from the riding that you've seen, where these people that you've looked up to forever and you're here now, who's blown your mind in person just the past couple days? Jackson Riddle is insane. He is so good. Like, his extension on, like, Superman's is just so crazy. Like, Nikolai Rigakin or Dylan Stark is so good. It's amazing. And then when you see a guy like Brandon Seminock, which I, I don't think he's competing yeah. this, but he was here riding the course, is that kind of just like a starstruck thing yeah, too? Yeah, that's like, crazy. Yeah, I've watched him since I was, like, eight, and now I'm here, and he's here, and it's like, whoa, that's insane. Do you talk to people like that, or are you um, just kind of just watching? I'm like, just maybe trying I'll to, like, just, yeah, I'm like, maybe at some point we'll cross paths. I'm just watching him at this point. I don't know. Still and, kind of a fan, but. <laughs> and so where does life take you after this? Do you have this big event, and is it, like, back to school? Yeah, I'm going back to school on Monday, and back to life, just normal life. You're like, Hopefully well, some more events in the future, but high school <laughs> yeah. so this is like your big coming out year yeah where like yeah people yeah. are gonna know your name after this year hopefully this is the one that gets me out there that'd be sweet i hope to be invited to a couple more events this year that'd be pretty sweet brooke mentioned how jackson was absolutely killing it and when i finished talking with her i walk outside of the athlete tent and there's jackson with a personal style that's a little bit different than almost anybody i've ever seen before and it's hard to describe and if dan took a photo you would see what i'm talking about i mean it was cool it was just different to me and that dude is a rad biker, and here's what he had to say. So a couple years ago, we came here, and you were like the little kid that everybody was like, dude, this guy's blowing up. He's going to be the next badass rider kind of guy. Did you feel that back then, where all the older guys were looking at you back then, like, holy shit, this kid's next? <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely a little bit. I just kind of came in. No one really knew who I was and started everything off with a big drop and got everyone talking, which was pretty sick. And... Yeah, here we are now. <laughs> and I was talking to Brooke earlier, and she's kind of in the position, maybe you were a few years back, where she's like the youngest person here, and she's like going against all her heroes. Did it feel like that to you back then, where it was all the dudes that you looked up to, and then you're competing against them at the first Proving Grounds? Yeah, definitely. Like Cam Zink and just having those guys in, it was pretty crazy because I've watched them my whole life. And then here I am next to them competing, which was pretty crazy. Now, I've talked to a bunch of people, and I'm like, who do I look out for? What's been going on in the past couple of days? Because I just got here, and they're like, Jackson's been fucking killing it. So it's like two years ago, they didn't know who you were until like event day and warm-up day, and now you're one of the guys that they're saying could be the front runner of that. Is that pretty crazy to you? Yeah, it's super crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm just out here having a good time, having fun. And has life changed for you? Have you been traveling the world and doing a ton of stuff since like 2019 or did a lot of plans get shut down because of the pandemic? How's your world been? Uh, it's been stayed pretty normal. I'm out in Utah and it's been pretty chill there with everything happening. So I've just been in the desert riding, doing my usual thing. Nothing much has changed. Cool. And the course, what do you think about it? I think it's awesome. Kyle and the diggers killed it. It's huge upgrades from two years ago. There's a lot more lines and different features, which are super sick. So after Jackson, I headed down to the partner area and I run into one of the friendliest riders I've met at any event. Mexico's Johnny Salido. 
Proving Grounds round two. We were just talking about last time you were limping around and you were hurt here. You didn't have the Red Bull colors on last year no. or last time you were here. When did that all happen for you? Uh, a week ago. No shit. Yeah. So I, that had to be super exciting. Yeah, super exciting. Uh, dream come true for sure. How did the, the whole helmet process go? Was it like a big <laughs> like thing? So I don't have a helmet now because it's not done. Or maybe it is, but it's not here. So I just have the hat. I'm signed with them, yeah, but I don't have a helmet yet. So they'll probably make a big production of you getting a helmet hopefully, at some point, hopefully, because that yeah. seems like it's a cool thing it's for a Red big Bull deal, athletes. Yeah, uh, I don't know why, but yeah, the helmet was just not painted in time. But either way, I don't care. Uh, so that's like a dream in your yeah, career, right? Stoked to join the family, and uh, yeah, stoked to finish my last event, probably my last event of the year, with being with Red Bull. Being that you're in Mexico, and I don't know how the whole COVID thing worked down there, although I know people got sick and died just like yeah. here, but how it's been travel for you? Has it been a pain in the ass? Uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of uh, tests, like 30 of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, but uh, yeah, traveling's been ch pretty chill. I mean, with COVID restrictions, but I've been to Europe, I've been here to the U.S., not Canada, though, which that's sad. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not too bad. I've been around. Haven't stayed at home for sure. Next up for me was to head back to the athlete tent. The sun had come out. The course was drying. And I ran into Todd Barber again. All right, Todd, we are at about 1 o'clock or something like that. I'm three beers in already, which is a problem for me. But what's going on? So we pushed everything a little bit back, but it looks like people are excited and everything's almost ready to go. Yeah, I think we're just kind of checking in with all the athletes, making sure everybody's getting the practice time they need because they didn't get it over the past two days. And I'd say we've got a little bit to go here. I know the ladies, they want to get some top to bottom runs, so we'll probably be a little bit more. But. When you think about towards the right place. When you think about the ladies and when you're building the features, I mean you're building it because you've built stuff for men forever and these girls are a little bit lighter I would think if you looked at an average weight, you know, there's a girl that's 107 pounds. Are they having trouble clearing the jumps and do you have to rethink that in future events with women? Yeah, possibly. You know, I think now that the dirt is dry and hardening in, they're going to feel a lot better. But yeah, we had to make some adjustments when they first got here. Some of them were having some trouble getting off the first drop just cuz they couldn't get the speed into it. So yeah, it's all kind of happening live. We're dialing it in and seeing how they're doing, but um, they're all charging. So I think it's, you know, we don't think we necessarily have to cater to them. It's just like be aware and what they need and maybe a little more practice time right now and we'll dial it in for them. All right. What are we like 20, 30 minutes out, an hour out? What do we got? Uh, I'd say probably an hour out. After I talk to Todd, I make a beeline for the porta potties and I'm going there. I see legend Kyle Strait sitting at the medical tent having some work done on his shoulder. So I go hit the bathroom, come on back, and I talk with Kyle. I'm just going to ask you the obvious. You're being worked on. You've been doing this shit forever. Yep. What does it take you to get ready for an event? You got a whole bunch of taping in the shoulders? And uh, it really all depends on previous injuries or, you know, injuries from the event or whatever. Um, usually I'm pretty good on injuries but uh this one i did uh ac separation like three months ago and haven't ridden you know big drops or anything like that in a while so it's it's acting up a bit so right now we're just loosening up the muscles and then we'll tape to help you know the extra for the day of the event is this just hard landings jolt that out of place or uh use uh hard landings kind of a mixture of all of it together and uh, speaking aside from injury, we've had a crazy year and a half, two years with the whole pandemic. What have you been doing with your time where a lot of times you'd be traveling, but it seemed like everybody had to reel it in a little bit? Uh, for me, I, I was pretty lucky. I still, like even last year, I did seven events. So I was able to do quite a bit and then had a little extra time to go to a bunch of different bike parks and things like that. So that was really cool. Uh, and then this year, I've been pretty busy as well. I did Europe trip, did my own event in Southern California, and then... Uh, now here and I've had a little extra time to film as well so it's just pretty cool I usually don't have that time so it's nice after Kyle I'm realizing that not only am I catching a buzz but I'm also getting a lot done and it's time to get more so it's back to the athlete tent and a guy who's going to do an interview with me at some point Nikolai Rogatkin you've been traveling all over Europe it seems like you've been at every fucking contest in the world was it a 1440 that you did on a bike was that uh yeah yeah um it was in Copenhagen it was crazy setup actually I did the 1440 four years ago at district ride in Nuremberg huge crowd and stuff and then for this contest in Copenhagen they brought the exact setup that I 1440 the first time same rolling same kicker same landing so I'm like man this is the jump for it so in uh 
in best trick there. Everyone was going crazy. Some double flip bar spins, 1080 no handers. I just pulled the uh, the 14. So stoked to do that for sure. Is that like you're winning the Super Bowl when you land that shit and everybody comes and tackles you on the ramp kind of thing? Is it like one of the best feelings you can have in your bike career almost? It's definitely one of the best feelings you can have. I feel like the team sports thing is different because like it's kind of like you're celebrating with your boys and like we're celebrating with our boys as well but it's like kind of an individual success win so this some of the aspects are the same but some are of course different but uh this is this is what we live for so it's glorious nonetheless when uh we experience things like that gotcha hey johnny salito so you saw that 1440 that he did when you saw that shit what did you think like oh my god that's fucking crazy uh, i was just stoked for him yeah, yeah i mean i'm so for him too but like just seeing that rotation is ridiculous i feel like and to ride out of it oh yeah yeah i'm saying johnny, yeah. i mean johnny uh this guy just kind of started really working his big tricks uh, just a few years ago and he's already cork sevening and stuff so uh he's on his way to some crazy moves as well yeah it just takes time So now things are firing on the course and athletes are now working their way back to the tent. They're getting some water and some food before they head up for their runs. And it's time for me to find some people to talk to. And I decided to talk to the one dude who doesn't have his name on his jersey, David Lieb. So David, is this your first big, big event? Uh, This is my first big, like, free ride style event. I've uh, I've competed in Crankwork Slope Style at Innsbruck this year. Okay. And typically I'm on the slope bike, but... I was able to get the invite out here, so I figured I'd give it a whirl and do my best, give it my best shot. And when you get on a course like this with some huge features, what's the most intimidating to you? For me, I think the most intimidating thing is the massive flat drops because in slope style, we do have big flat drops, but they're substantially smaller than this. So just adapting to the giant impacts and getting your bike set up right is all uh, part of the learning curve. And so this event used to be a qualifier for Rampage, and now it's kind of graduated into like a mix of slope style and big mountain. And do you look at it as different than slope style? Like there are those features that are built. There's some big jumps here, but it's a different thing than just your slope style crankworks type event. Yeah, it's for sure different. It it is very similar to what you just said. Like it's a big slope style course in a way. Yeah. But I like the opportunity to have some variation in the line choice. You can add some creativity and, uh, yeah, it's just a really good opportunity to be here. It actually kind of attracted me more that it wasn't a qualifier for Rampage because I've never been out to Utah to ride before. So I'm actually headed to Rampage this year to go watch for the first time. So I figured I wouldn't want to like accidentally get myself into something over my head, but it's a really good opportunity to be out here and kind of mix it up with the boys. And it seems like the aspiration for everyone, even though you haven't been to a Rampage in person yet, I've been there, it's fucking crazy, but it seems like that's the aspiration is people want to go to that big mountain venue. And is this the the step that kind of gets you there is experiencing these big drops and then you can step to the real cliffs in Utah? Yeah, I think it's a great stepping stone to kind of get into the massive features. And then if you pair this type of riding with actually going to Utah and getting familiar with the land, I think it could be a really good setup for success. After David, in came Hannah Bergman, and I hadn't seen her for like five hours at this point, and I wanted to see what had changed in her world. We talked earlier, it was wet, it was soft, you couldn't get a lot of speed. Yeah. That was at 7 in the morning. Now we're at like 1 p.m. How is the course riding for you? It's surprisingly, like the sun came out and um, it dried everything out surprisingly well, and I feel like um, I'm really impressed. Like It feels much better than I expected. Like I had, I had hope, and... It exceeded my expectations, so I'm stoked. And I was able to put a run together. Yeah. So you were able to put a run together. And for all the women, like, the big thing is speed. Because yeah. earlier it was soft. You couldn't get the speed. But now everybody can get the speed. Yeah. It's still a struggle. Like, we're pedaling pretty hard. And, like, some of the lighter gals are still struggling a bit. Like, I feel like I have a little bit of an advantage because I'm a little heavier. But it's working. It's better than I expected based on how much it rained and how soft it was even this morning. Yeah. I think it'll be great. It's time for my second round of sponsors, and Stanley is a brand that I trust. I like the people who work there, and I've always been a big fan of their products. They've been around since 1913, and they invented the keep things hot and cold categories. You know, it's that green bottle that your grandpa took everywhere that he possibly went. That's Stanley. And unlike these new copycat brands, Stanley has stayed true to itself not jacking up their prices like everyone else that markets themselves as an outdoor adventure brand. Stanley is the original. And because they love my show and you, my listeners, they're offering the best deal you're going to find anywhere from Stanley right here. You're going to get 30% off all things Stanley. 
I highly recommend picking up a set of the pint glasses as I use them on a daily basis. To get the deal, what you need to do is head on over to Stanley1913.com, go shopping. At checkout, you're going to enter the code DRINKFAST. That's all one word and you'll get the deal. If you spend over $100, I'll send you a Powell Movement beanie on top of that. In keeping with the theme of original, my next sponsor, Rollerblade, pretty much invented inline skating. And based on all of us being stuck inside for way too long over this pandemic, getting outside and getting in shape and having fun should be the priority. And that's what Rollerblade is best at. They make the most comfortable, high-performance skates on the market that you can use for training, transportation, or preparing for ski season. And ski season is so close that now's the time to download Rollerblade's award-winning Skate to Ski app. It will put you on the path to having your best ski season ever. You can download the Skate to Ski app on the App Store and find out everything else about Rollerblade over at rollerblade.com. My final sponsor is Alpine Vans. And in this day and age of having a mobile adventure unit, from start to finish, no one makes the van building process easier, more fun, and most importantly, better than the rest. Well, I could go on about the beauty of their builds. You can check out the 15-minute look at Cody Townsend's van that he created for the 50 Project with Alpine Vans and get an idea of what paying attention to every single detail means. Cody's rig is a functional thing of beauty that looks as good as it performs. And Alpine Vans is your one-stop shop to make the van of your dreams a reality. They have the designers and fabricators who have all have degrees but have also lived the life. Think ski patrollers who open and close resorts and live in the lots. Mountain bikers who will spend weeks upon end in their vehicle using that as their mobile adventure unit. These guys have lived it, they understand it, and that experience is what makes them the best. And right now, while other people are scrambling to find vehicles because of the technology shortage, Alpine has eight Mercedes Sprinters ready to go. You can have your dream mobile in your driveway in 90 days. So head on over to alpinevans.com to start your build today. Those are my sponsors. Now let's get back into the podcast. At this point, it's almost 2 o'clock. We're about 15 minutes away from the start of the event. And I look to my right, and it's an old ski friend, the kind marketing guru, Gabe Schroeder. You've been up on the course. You are in tune with everything mountain bike. What did you see that impressed you before this contest starts? Dylan Stark, he's he's right here. Yeah, go ahead. What yeah. was he doing? I'm going to ask Well, him he's about next. sending it off of the Megalodon, which is the huge oh, fin. So. Okay. And that's looking really cool. Watch this. Now I'm going to talk to him. So I hear you just said you're starting to feel a little bit of fatigue right now, and you're eating oranges for scurvy. Is that what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. I just I like oranges, and they're good. And I don't know. I feel like it's nature's medicine, you know. And I've been up all day. I camped here, got up early, and it was freezing. And then just did, I think, maybe five laps. And I'm just going to take a little rest, chill, go back to camp, hang out, just recoup, and then come back into the fresh head. I just did one of my rounds. I pretty much want to do about a couple things right now, so... When I come back in it is make the runs count, you know, because I've been having so much fun riding top to bottom, and we had to wait to, I, I was out there digging, making sure it wasn't going to pick up mud on my tires with a shark fin, I don't want to slip out on that, but seeing really dry and really fast now, so feeling good, and before I mess up feeling good, I'm going to take a chill pill and just hang yeah. out and then come back at it with a clear head. You're one of the few guys hitting that shark fin feature, and it's super, like a cool feature. Honestly, it's the most fun thing. I'm like, you come into it so hot, you're just looking at it, and you're just like, yes, because it reminds me of the old wall ride at Snow Summit. I used to just love blasting the flat, but it's like the bigger version of it, and it's just even This guy's even a fucking better. man. <laughs> Johnny Salido. I can't wait to go to your thing in January. Oh, yeah. You're having a contest in January? Not a contest. Jam. A jam session type deal in For Mexico? For Fiesta. In Mexico, so that means yeah. everything's going to be less expensive when you get there. Oh, Johnny's going to throw a big party, and it's going to be a lot of fun in Mexico. Is that right? Yeah. I'm yeah. just guessing. I'm I'm going to tell you there's a tequila sponsor, so you figure it out from <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, man, that sounds like a lot of trouble, and you're going to have to clean up that mess. But you know what? It's your event. You do that. Good luck out there, man. Thank you so much. Hey, really I'll talk to you. appreciate it. Thank you for the time. Hey, no problem. Thank you, man. So after Dylan and Johnny Salido head up the hill, all the athletes are gone, and the whole tent area clears out. I have a lot of audio, and I'm feeling pretty good. Like, I'll get the winners and maybe another person or two, and then I'll have a decent podcast. But then I see a group of dudes in all black talking, and I notice one of them is Brandon Seminuk. He hadn't left yet. And last time I spoke with him, I made a fool out of myself. But I feel like I owe it to you guys to make a fool out of myself again. So I lurked in like I was getting ready to jump into a double Dutch jump rope type thing, and I worked my way into the conversation. 
everything kind of feeds the other and where it comes from and how it gets consumed. And, uh, Contests are cool for the circus trick mentality of like the masses seeing it like, oh my God, that guy did this. But then like the core wants to see what you're doing. They don't even want to see you do tricks. They want to see you ride and fucking spray shit. And like, holy <laughs> shit, that style that he has is really cool. And I think that's the big difference between all of us. Yeah, I mean, that's a portion. You also have like, the tough thing is like if you're only filming, you don't really connect with the fans. Like even though there's not like a ton of people here, but just like the people that are here watching are like next level stuff. Like and that just carries it like the sport so much further. Like you start to build culture within these like core groups. But you say that, but like I'm here to cover this event and you're the one dude that I would want to talk to because I don't care if you're competing because it's just like that's Brandon Seminock. Yeah, yeah, I don't need to compete, but like yeah. the fact that the kids can connect with me, like you can see them, like their energy go towards mountain biking. Like it's like this is really cool, like, you know. To be able to put a face to like maybe I put out a video, but it's like it's different, and it's like, well, that was the person. That's cool. And I heard you were in like some rally car thing, and you were leaving here to go race cars. Is that true or is that uh, false? No, no. <laughs> I, I gotta leave to do some sponsor stuff. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, we've been racing a bit. Okay. And is that the next thing on your your horizon? That's is pushing just, that stuff? It's just my passion, hobby, passion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, w I wish it could be the, the next thing, but it doesn't quite work. Like is that. biking still as fun as it always has been to you? Fun, Nothing's yeah. changed. Ride every day. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Man. It's yeah. pretty awesome. You see it now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're I here just to like see nine it. hours to yeah, get yeah. one session. So awesome. yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I need to go ride something different. Yeah. And you're here. Why is why not compete? I just dude, I've had a long year. I got rampage coming up. I'm just chilling. Like I don't really like the competitive like competition environment. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't seem like your style, you know. And you don't need to. Yeah, it's, I have my checklist through the year. I, I've got through that. I'll do rampage, and I'm good. So yeah, have some fun with the boys. And now that I listened back to that, I realized I didn't get much out of Brandon. But in my head, I felt so good that I went straight to the ten barrel tent for some more refreshment. And I find Dan there, and we're sitting down, sipping on a Pilsner, and I'm telling him how much I've gotten done, and how he's done nothing, and then, all of a sudden, he goes, there's Travis Rice, and flash, I was off to go talk to my golden orca. So we're at a crazy oh, mountain well, bike event, and you are known for crazy in. events and having a baby right now, which is pretty amazing. Congratulations to both of you guys. Yeah, I appreciate it. How much does having a baby take away from your life in terms of all the shit you have to do as a pro athlete? <laughs> um, I would say nothing. I think it adds a lot, frankly. I mean, that type of question, you know, it's all about perspective, right? Yeah. You're going to see the glass half empty or half full. Um, well, you have a lot of trips that you have to be on. I have a kid as well. And sometimes you have to choose between family and a trip. And a lot of the stuff you do is really important to your sport. And how hard is it to make those choices? Or is it just coming up because it's new? Well, I think, I think part of it is like, how good are you at managing multiple things at once? And, you know, frankly, my ability to, uh, you know, function with a, with a family and having a little one, um, I've got an empowered team and it's, I don't think it takes away at all. And a lot of the stuff you touch in your career, has been like gold. And I would say the coolest thing that's happened in all of action sports since Rampage is your natural selection event. And pretty amazing, especially the live ones where you're seeing everything happen right there. I'm sure it's super expensive and super challenging to make it happen. You're working all year round for it. What do we have to look forward to next year? Cause it was the most fun thing in snowboarding last year. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, man. I mean, yeah, last year's event went off, you know, amongst the challenges of doing things with COVID. And, you know, this year we're straight just taking it to that next level. I mean, you know, yeah, DJ just landed. It. Sorry, I don't mean to ruin your event. But. It's all good. Um, you know, last year we laid down a foundation. And, you know, what we have planned for this coming season, the season after, it's just building upon that foundation. So Frank. that live experience where it's almost like, I mean, you see stuff in team sports where it's super live events, you get the real-time feedback. That's what that was for snowboarding. It was like, you're seeing it all right then, there's no editing, it's just like amazing content. And that's the future, is just live, real-time stuff? Yeah. I mean, it is, man. It, it, it's all headed in that direction. It's still tricky. I mean, like this event today, you know, it takes a ton of 
resources to actually push out the uh, quality live show. But this event today is not doing what you did. You took this event today and you made it real time where anyone in the world can see it right now, which is incredible because this event's in fantastic. It's amazing. But not everybody can see it right now. What you're able to do, given there's an extra expense, but like that's what's going to grow these sports, right? It's making these things a real thing for everyone. It is, man, and it's about you know it's it's about it's about sustainable growth, and you know like this this event you know did one event in 2019, right? And they're headed in that direction. They're not there yet. You know we shit 2008 was our first event. We did two more events in 2012, 2013 in Canada, and. You know, same for us. Like we had to, we had to work our way up to that. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, I thank you for your time. How much time do you spend biking? Is that something you like to do as well? Oh yeah, for sure, man. I, I got a couple evil bikes that I've had for years, and I just, I, I love mountain biking. And, uh, I've, I've ridden a bunch this summer. And, you know, we've been doing a lot of work on the venue out in Jackson Hole this summer. And, like, every day we go up, we bring bikes. And, yeah, so you get to it. bike and then set up your winter terrain in the summer. Yeah, I mean, it's like pre-build it pretty much. Great way to, yeah, great way to access the mountains. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. Get back to your family and the event. Yeah, I'll good. I appreciate it, man. It's like to be here. This is an epic event. Awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. My pleasure. So at this point, I almost feel like I'm done. Like home run, I talked to both Seminuk and Travis Rice, but I wasn't going to stop drinking and I wasn't going to stop interviewing people. But what I was doing was missing runs looking for people to talk to. And I missed Carson Storch's first run, but I was still going to talk to him about it. Awesome first run. You had a hurt shoulder going in. I don't know if you had a yeah. broken collarbone or whatever was going on. I just yeah. heard that was messed up. Yep. And you get through that. Everything worked out, right? Yeah, yeah. I broke my collarbone like two months ago and tore my AC joint rotator cuffs. It's been a struggle, lots of PT, and coming into this is kind of pushing it, but uh, yeah, just been having fun, trying to get back on the bikes all as I can and just work through the pain because it's going to hurt for a while. Yeah, so I just came in, just wanted to do my thing and not really trying to win or anything, just do my thing, get in contest mode again for Rampage, and so my first run worked, and I'm stoked, and I'm going to call it on that because don't want to risk myself anymore, save myself for the desert. Well, it seems like it's kind of the program is that if you don't worry about it and you just don't think about it and just try to get through it, yeah. you're going to do well, and now you can have a beer and not have to worry about a second run. That's pretty nice. For sure, yeah. Like, I'd like to do a second run. I, I just don't want to risk it right now with my shoulder and uh, just save myself for Utah. And I, I felt good. I was having fun. It was the main thing and flowing, and so it all just kind of came to me, and so now I'm chilling, having a beer. Next thing you know, a stoked David Lieb makes his way into the athlete tent. Yeah, we're uh, sitting in fifth place at the moment. I got my run done. It was exactly what I set out to do that lap. I'm kind of surprised at how good it actually went. Everything felt really smooth and nice. And then when I made it to the step down flip at the end, I was completely just smiling ear to ear, happy to know that I was down there. So, um, yeah, super stoked with that so far. Uh, we'll see how the numbers end up and maybe I'll go for a second run. So is that something that you think about, like, I might not go for a second run because this is all I have? Or do you have, like, I'm going to step it up on my next run. I've landed a solid one in fifth. I'm going to send it a little bit more and try to win. Yeah, uh, that's, I mean, that's the question of the day, right? Like, if, I, I, basically everything I set out to do, I just accomplished. And yeah. that was already taking some level of risk. Yeah. And when you think about risk management, it's like, how much more do I really want to step it up? Because, like, where I'm at is pretty good. Um, it's like my first free ride event, and I don't know. We'll uh, see how the numbers work out, and I'll let that be my motivation. I try to slip out of the athlete tent again and head over to the 10 barrel area. But when I'm walking out of the athlete area, one of the female riders, Kami Naguria, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing her last name wrong, well, she's getting sprayed with water, and some of it hits me, and go figure, I stumbled upon the female winner when she found out that she'd won. You're sitting here, you're covered in water, you came all the way from South America, and you are sitting in a pretty amazing spot, like this is yours, how does yeah, it feel? It feels good, yeah, I'm so stoked to be here, I can't believe it that I take the first spot, I'm, I'm so happy that we have a woman's category here, and yeah, I'm so happy, yeah. <laughs> Were you at Hannah's event last week as well? Yeah. You all, you, so you got the circuit of being here oh, in America yeah. for a couple weeks and doing all this stuff, yeah. and then you get to leave and it's like on a, a super high is that like it's yeah. like amazing for you Hannah's event was super great and really good energy and now came here with her on the raft of the girls it was amazing yeah I'm just having 
at such a good time. So yeah. And so a lot of these jumps, I've kind of mentioned it to some of the guys. They're built thinking of the guys. Like they're not built thinking of you at 135 pounds or whatever you weigh. Yeah. Is it hard for you to get the speed to like hit I, yeah, these things? That's scary shit. Absolutely. Yeah. Like if I was not following the boys because we have different weights. So I was on my own and trying to figure it out by myself. But I think that I was so smart and I was thinking a lot and I did the correct decisions at all the time. So I think that, that was that was great. <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations and have an amazing night. Thank you so have much. Thank Thanks. you. I ran into Brooke congratulating Cammie and she filled me in on what happened to her. So two of six women went and yeah. it just, you guys didn't have enough time to practice at all i mean we got kind of delayed from like all the weather and everything and it was just whoever was willing to hit things and kind it's of not in a short it. time and it was just like i didn't have time to hit things that i wanted to hit and i couldn't link a whole run together so i got a couple of the features down i just couldn't make a whole run out of it and really it's just being here in the whole it's just experience. being here in the yeah. Yeah, first place it's sick so I'm fine with it. Dad can breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, that you don't have right. to rush yourself into anything that yeah. you're not ready for. Because right. there's going to be a time in life probably where everything's not going to line up, but you're going to be a bigger kid and you're going to have to make that call. Right, yeah. And, you know, and this is like a, a full-on first time about, yeah. like, hey, pulling back. So sure. not a terrible thing to do, but yeah. a hard thing, I would think. Yeah. I mean, it was fine, though, because Sam and Haz weren't doing it either, so it was, like, definitely easier because they weren't as well. I don't know. I thought it was a fun event, though. I mean, you're a 15-year-old kid <laughs> with all the best in the world, and you are part of that crew. And, like, you had a legitimate yeah, chance to be in the top sweet, of your yeah. little area. So, yeah, pretty amazing experience. Have fun in school Thank on you. Monday. Yeah, And sweet. do all your homework unless you're Yeah, right. <laughs> sweet. Yeah. yeah. There we exactly. go. Exactly. <laughs> For the end of the event, my plan was to hang out in the corral area, and I'd get the interview with whoever beat Carson Storch's score. And Reed Box came really, really close. Reed, going into your second run, like if all the pressure's on your shoulders, how does it feel when you get through and everything that you wanted to happen worked out? No words to describe it. It's just the best feeling ever. That's why we do this sport, is to have this feeling. The adrenaline and the reward at the end of the run is just the best. So when your first run doesn't work out as planned and it's like you just have it all to hang out in the second run, is that kind of what you do? It's like It kind of helps, yeah, because it's now or never. If you crash, you crash. If you win, you have this feeling. So it's, it's rewarding. It's awesome, man. <laughs> so now you sit in second, you just have to wait, and you hope you, you walk out I with second so, place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's There's some heavy hitters coming, so I'm nervous, but hey, I had fun, came here, I put down a run, and I'm stoked, so thank you, man. For that last part of the event, while I'm in the corral, I'm standing with Carson Storch and Reed Boggs' agent, Ryan Runke. So you've got a horse in this race, and I'll say that, and Carson Storch is in first place. He's been sitting in first place all of the second round, and where's his head right now? He's not going to take a second round unless he has to? I got two horses, Carson and Reed, one and two. Okay, so you've so got, got one and two. Second. But Reed can't overtake Carson, he's done. No, Carson's good. He's not taking a second round anyways. And is Reed, Reed's already done his second yeah, round. Yeah, and he's in second place now. So with Carson, if someone were to surpass him and take it, he's he wouldn't done. take a second round? I'll save it for Rampage. Okay. He's done. And for you as an agent, does that mean anything if they, I mean, other than like you love these guys and they're going to win an event, does it mean anything in terms of you being an agent or no? Yeah, it means cash in our pocket. Okay. <laughs> but this event is one of those where it's like they, the winner's going to get 4000 What's the second place going to get? Don't worry about that. Let's talk about incentive money. Uh-huh. Incentive bonuses from companies. Well, that's a different story completely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's all I care about. I mean, these are yeah, your friends, man. Friends. I get this. Yeah, they crushed yeah. it. They both, it's and good to see them both competing. There hasn't been an event in a year and a half. So it's it's nice having the dudes in one and two going into yeah. the, the final round, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and Rampage is coming up soon, so that's the most important. Runky will be Runky, and Carson Storch will take this one for the men, which is really cool because Carson seems like a really nice, kind-hearted, good dude, and I really wish I would have seen his winning run. I'll walk with you guys. Yeah, let's go. Runky's like on our walk. We're business. We have to go right now. Ryan Runky. So we are out of here with Runky. He's like, we are out of here, Carson. We are done. I've got to go sit outside and have a beer somewhere. But I'm here with Carson Storch. You won an event. When was yeah. the last time you won an event? The last time I won an event was like 2015. So this is pretty amazing. 2021. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Dude, congrats, man. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll take it. It's yeah. super nice to win, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. better than second or third place when you win. That's pretty didn't, fun, didn't right? I didn't expect it. I was just trying to get in the mindset for Rampage. That was my whole goal. Yeah, yeah, that's what you were saying earlier. Is yeah. it a big deal that it's your hometown event and all these kids like know you from here and you can like see them in person and win? 
Oh, for sure. Like I had a lot of extra pressure just being from here and knowing so many, so many people that came out here. But you know, I'm, I'm just psyched. I can't believe it. I didn't really expect it at all. Just having fun, trying to flow, and uh, yeah, so it worked out. I don't come into any of these events thinking that Carson's gonna win. I was thinking Jackson might win or Nikolai <laughs> or somebody, and you end up winning. That's pretty fucking crazy, man. So yeah. congratulations. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't mean to slight you by saying that at oh, all. No, but you no, know, no, like man. predictions, yeah. if you put odds makers out there, yeah, yeah. you're like the 10 to 1 I'm guy that made a hype. lot of people money. I'm not in the hype right now. No. I'm uh, coming off an injury, a couple injuries, so I'm psyched. So that was the event, and it was time to go. Dan was driving, and I convinced him that we needed to say hi to Greg Stump. Greg didn't answer any of my calls, so we went to his house, knocked, and his girlfriend Casey opened the door and told us that she just put Greg down to bed and then asked if we had beer. We said we would get some beer, and she said she would wake Greg up. When we got back, Greg was awake. He was as eccentric as ever. Dan and I had a couple beers there. Dan was completely weirded out, and that's to be expected when you're at the Stumps house. But to tell you the truth, his place was looking a hell of a lot better than it was last time. Things looked better in his life, and he had a cool 80s haircut back, which I haven't seen on him in a while. That's the podcast for this week. I hope you like this traveling roadshow. If you get a chance, check out all the highlights from this event and go see a mountain bike event in person. It's mind-blowing. These dudes are badass. One thing I also want to let you know is that this is pretty much a same-day edit. I recorded and drank beer on Saturday, and then on Sunday, I woke up, drove six hours, sat in front of my computer all day, and put together this episode. Hopefully you like it. Either way, let me know. For now, please follow me on all platforms, and please, please support my amazing sponsors who make this thing happen. They are Stanley, Peter Glenn Ski and Sports, Alpine Vans, Rollerblade, Dragon, and the 10 Barrel Brewery. Have a great week, everyone.